Hi guys, Ali Pierce, scuba tech tips. When you're scuba diving, if you are for some reason face it down, laying on the bottom, shall we say, it's hard to breathe, harder, harder. If you flip over on your back, you're laying up looking at the bubbles, it's easy. Why is that? Now, number one, let me point out the fact that this is actually a phenomenon that goes back to two hose regulator days. I'll explain why in just a minute. Uh, and it was very, very common back then. In fact, it was so common back then, if you laid face down, it was hard to breathe. But if you laid on your back, the regulator free flowed. That's how easy it was, yeah. So I'm already giving you a hint. It's related to the regulator. Nothing to do with you. Up or down, you breathe the same, right? within reason. Anyway, so let's take a quick look. I'll quickly explain the physics behind this, and that'll help you a little bit. So here we are with some of my great artwork. You guys have seen it before. <clears throat> this is the surface of the water. This is a diver. You can tell it's a diver because he has a mask on, right? And he has a scuba tank on his back with good green air in it. And a regulator right there. Now over here, and he's, he's facing down. Yeah? He's laying on the sandy bottom. And over here is Kevin. Kevin is laying on his back. He's face. <laughs> he's face. He's not pregnant. Trust me. <laughs> he's uh, face up, looking up at the surface. And here he is here with his mask on and his um, uh, tank of nice green air on his back. And it's really it's very simple. If you read or if you know about regulators, you know that regulators are susceptible to the water pressure. That is, if you're on the surface breathing on the surface, let's say on the beach, you're on the beach, kind of funny looking, you got a regulator in your mouth and you breathe, <laughs> then you roll onto your face or onto your back, it doesn't change, it never changes, no, 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 this is only a phenomenon that you, uh, that you notice in the water, yes, that's right, so it's the water pressure versus the regulator is the cause of all of this, and um, you already know, if you've been watching at all, that the first stage of the regulator mm -hmm. is affected by the water pressure, it has to be, because the first stage must deliver air to your second stage, which is in your mouth, at a constant pressure of 150 psi. It's called the intermediate pressure around 150. It could be anywhere from 140 to 160 or so. But around 150 psi, the first stage delivers air to the second stage, which is in your mouth, at about 150 psi, called the intermediate pressure. Then you breathe from that pocket, if you like, resource of air. And, and then the first stage automatically opens and continues to supply air at that 150 PSI. And that works perfectly at the surface. As you descend, however, it becomes a bit of an issue because as you descend, every foot, every foot makes a difference. As you descend, <clears throat> the first stage must deliver air at 150 above ambient. Ah, above ambient. So at the surface, if you're able to measure, the intermediate pressure is 150. But as you start to descend, that intermediate pressure has to increase to overcome the water pressure that's acting on your lungs. It has to give you higher pressure air, you see. And it does that very easily. There's a diaphragm, and that diaphragm, in many cases, could be a piston, but in many cases, a rubber diaphragm in there. And as you descend, water actually goes into your regulator. Now, don't give me this about sealed regulators. I know all about that. But even if there's sealed regulators, the water pushes on that diaphragm. So as you dive deeper and deeper and deeper, the water pressure affects the first stage and, and it effectively increases that 150 psi intermediate pressure by the depth of, of the water, by the water pressure. So let's assume you were diving at 30 feet. Roughly at 30 feet, the water pressure is also 15 psi, roughly. Now you've also got 15 psi at the surface like that, so roughly at, at 30 feet, the 150 psi intermediate pressure is now increased to 165 psi, 15 psi more, because that's the depth, that's the pressure of the water at 30 feet. So now it's giving you air at 165. Now you don't notice this, because the pressure in your lungs is also increased. It feels exactly the same. Exactly right, and on it goes, you see? So the water pressure acting on the first stage of the regulator increases the intermediate pressure coming to you by the depth of the water, the pressure of the water. Let's take a quick look at this silly picture I have here. If you're face down in the water like this, 
The regulator's up here. This distance above the bottom, above your face and lungs, this distance. So your face, your lungs, and your body, in the second stage, everything about you is being exposed to water pressure that is greater than the pressure on that regulator. So the regulator has not increased the pressure to you. It has not increased the 150 PSI to match the water pressure where you are. So it's a little harder to breathe. Now, you say, oh, that's just hard to breathe. What happens if I flip over? So flip over, lay on your back. Now what's happened? Exactly. You, your lungs, your face, your mouth, the second stage, all of you is up here. Whereas the scuba tank with the regulator is down here. Now it's only a, a, a six inches, a foot, 12 inches, depending on several circumstances. There's not much of a difference, but regulators, particularly today, are very, very sensitive. One inch difference and water pressure will cause a free flow. But let's go back to this. So now the regulator is below you. It's under greater pressure. It's under greater water pressure. So it thinks that you are deeper than you really are. It thinks you're deeper than you really are. So the regulator is down here, and it is measuring the water pressure, adding that water pressure to the intermediate pressure going to you. So it's taking the 150, adding that water depth to it, and delivering it to you. But you're not that deep. You're up here. So it's just easier to breathe. The water, the air pressure coming to you is a little bit too high, so it makes it easier for you to breathe. And that's a very simplistic explanation, but that's it. Now, if you had been diving many years ago with a two-hose regulator, let's put nice crinkly hoses on here. Okay, it looks like a two-hose, see? <laughs> like this. Now, it gets even more interesting because both stages, first and second stage, are here. Here. There's no more second stage in your mouth with a two-hose regulator. It's just the hoses. So, <clears throat> in this particular case, all of the pressure is on the regulator on your tank. And in this particular situation, it's lower than the pressure on your body. You have to suck to get the air through the hoses. You have to suck. It's hard to breathe. Whereas in this case, you flip over and you have a two-hose regulator. And again, first and second stage, they're both here, lower than you. The pressure is higher. So it's delivering air through those hoses. You certainly don't have to suck on it. In fact, it's very common practice to take the mouthpiece out of your mouth in this situation, hold it up, and air would bubble out, just bubble out, because the pressure was too high. It was only that much lower, six, eight, ten inches lower, and it was so, it was just an increased pressure enough to make the regulator bubble. Problem? Well, you know, not really. Today, with modern regulators, a lot of these issues with air pressure and so on have been worked out for various springs and levers, so the, the phenomenon today is still noticeable but not nearly so much. It's not a big issue. Back in these days, it was kind of funny because, you see, if we took the two hose hoses out of our mouth, the hoses would fill with water. Now, you may have seen in pictures, maybe you've experienced it, those hoses. They're inch, one inch, a bit more than an inch in diameter, full length, all the way around your head. There's about three feet of hose filled with water. <laughs> you put it back in a suck, guess what you get? Water. Uh, so I, I, what, what you, you, the reg comes out of your mouth, it fills with water. What do you do? Well, it's easy. Flip on your back. The pressure on the regulator down here increases, and it starts to blow air through the hoses. When it starts to blow through, you put it in your mouth, and away you go. The hose has been cleared of water by that increased pressure. So again, there you go. Very simplistic idea that if you're face down, the regulator is higher than you, so the pressure on the regulator is not as great and it's harder to breathe. When you flip over in your back, now the pressure on the regulator is greater, and it'll actually deliver too much air to you. Makes it easier to breathe. Simple. There it is. Maybe KV has a good thing for you to look at. But just that, just that easy, guys. And it's kind of interesting how the vintage aspect, old double hose regulators, come into this as well. Okay, that's enough. Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips.